Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Maybe see. Thank you so much. This morning, grateful to God for all of you, especially um, for all the saints of God that is here and watching online. Can you put the... This morning as we sit in the presence of God, and I always look for a word of encouragement um, as to, Lord, if you want to speak to the people, is there a word that you can give? And I always claim this, and I say this, somebody in the congregation should speak about it. And so I was expecting somebody to say anything, and then Brother Wilson got up and said that word. Do you remember saying that word? We have to move forward. And I said, Lord, you want to speak to the congregation this morning? And the passage is from Joshua chapter 3. Um, it is about moving forward, looking up to a higher level. So after wandering in the wilderness for 40 odd years, the people of Israel has come to the plains of Moab on the east side of the Jordan River, opposite Jericho. Now, if you look at the background of this book, there was a leader, a mighty warrior that led them to the precipice of the promised land. And there he is, and, and, and that chapter in, um, in Joshua, Joshua 1, it, 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 it starts with verse 2, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses of uh, Moses, aid. he says, Moses, my servant is somebody who is a mighty warrior and who is a great leader who led hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, and he is bringing up to the precipice, and right there, he's dead. Now what? And so the mantle of leadership now falls to Joshua. And he was Moses' assistant for all these years. And, and, and there are some people, and you know, one of my mentors has been Jake, Pastor Jacob Matthew. There is a, there is a person in, uh, in, in Ahmedabad. His name is Gio Orgis. And I don't know whether some of you might know him. Gio is as tall and as you know, healthy as Jacob Matthew is. If you see him, he walks like Jacob Matthew. If you hear him preach, he preaches like Jacob Matthew. And sometimes I, I'm envious when we are all talking, he tries to get as much face time with Jacob Matthew whenever we are all together. I think, and when I, when I was reading this and I said, Joshua was one of those. He was waiting for whatever comes out of Moses' mouth so that he can learn. And sometimes as leadership, what happens is the next group of people think that they know more and they don't want to learn anything. But here, this man, Joshua, wanted to learn everything now it has come to a point, he's almost 80 odd years, and now he is about, or he became now the leader. Now the grief of Moses' death passes up, and the excitement starts to build. The Lord is about to fulfill his centuries-old promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that is that you would have a homeland to serve God without fear. And now this is a decisive moment for the Israelites. They missed this promised land after coming very close for all these years. But now they are standing on the precipice of the Jordan River. And between them and the promised land is that river. Is that river. And that river is the land that was called that flowed with milk and honey. So, but they are also frightened about the future. They do not know what is out there. 
And in the beginning of this year, we do not know what is out there. How can we move forward? And that is where the title came up. It's time to move forward. Looking up. Where I end, I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. There is no help that we think that we can come. And that is where we read this, pas- this passage. I don't know whether you can read this. In verse 14 through 17 of chapter 3. And it says like this. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan. The priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reaching the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan, and stood on dry ground while all israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground this is where it ends up these people are crossing now how did they do it we find here that before god gave them victory over jordan and other cities beyond jordan they had to make some changes in their commitment to god and this is exactly i think what god wants to speak to us throughout this year for week 1 i i said a similar encouragement message segue to i did the same thing week 3 well, week 2 pastor um, uh, or bishop madden came in and encouraged us and week 3 again i'm sharing this because i want this not to be like any other year but a blessed year we have to move forward we cannot be stuck we have to move forward oru potuvarthi povan alla god wants us to move forward so how can we do that number one you cultivate courage look at joshua chapter 1 verse 6 and it says like this as uh, in verse 5 uh, the middle part as i was with moses god says so i will be with you i will never leave you nor forsake you and he says be strong. strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land i swore to their ancestors to give them it starts with leadership and it says that be strong and courageous to move forward we have to look up but we have to gain strength from the lord because he says be strong and courageous this leader who learned under the best general probably is also now saying what next because the general's word was the 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 word that everybody would obey but the enforcer was Joshua so he would get that word from the leader and that leader would get the word from where from God himself now sometimes we are at that precipice we do not know what the next move is and that is where god himself comes to joshua and says be strong and courageous i am with you i will never leave you nor forsake you see god wants joshua to know that moses was in the key god was in three different times he was saying i am with you i am with you he says be strong and courageous three times in that passage in that first chapter when god sees our fears he wants to fill us with courage this morning we heard the testimony of of jenny and she says that she was fearful she did not know what to do this morning the lord is encouraging every jenny that is sitting out here be strong and courageous because i the lord is with you In 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 it says for God did not give us a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power see in the time when we are discouraged God is telling us I have given you the spirit of power 
And he says, you can overcome any battles that is in front of you with the courage that I give unto you. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. It says, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. The children of God, there is three situations that it says, waters, which is, it overwhelms our life. Sometimes if you go swimming, and especially those people that go to Destin, Florida, they know very well about the waves, right? I'm looking at you, you alone. Those people that take Destin as their destiny. Or the destination. Right? For them, that water, that waves come and it overwhelms you. And as we heard this discouraging news about people committing, you know, acts of, of, of suicide, with, when, when they are overwhelmed with things, remember, God is there to encourage you. Do not be overwhelmed. Do not be overwhelmed. And then it says, when you pass through the rivers, it would not sweep over you. If you cross that river, and especially as these people are standing across from the river Jordan, it always has the high tide and the low tide where the, the, the waves come in. And then it says, when you walk through the fire, this is the situation that many of us go through, the impossible situations. As soon as you come near the fire, the flame will either burn you or consume you. Those are the impossible situations. He says, you will not be warned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And then God commands Joshua to be courageous because those he is leading needed to have, need him to have courage. See, leadership is such, it always either encourages people or discourages people. And if Joshua is discouraged, the people will be discouraged. They will be standing there in the, front, and, and in the front of that river and they will not cross over if he was perturbed. And God says, I encourage you. And so when Joshua declares that this you will overcome in verse 16 to 18, in, in, in verse uh, of uh, Joshua 1, it says, then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you will send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Sometimes that leader also needs an encouragement from the people. And he got it from his people. He says that just as we were with Moses and he encouraged us and we were able to follow that word today, this morning or this afternoon or this evening, wherever those people were, they say, we will also obey the same command as long as you stay strong and courageous. So I will tell you, church, whatever you are worried about right now, God wants you to have the courage to confront the issue. It might think that it is as big as a mountain. And I will tell you, as friends and family, as a church, we want you to have courage. And so this morning, cultivate courage. That is the first step. Number two. Can you go to the next Don't make obedience optional. Now, in chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, it says like this, God is saying to him, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. And then he says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful see another foundational principle to moving forward looking up is to take your obedience to god to the next level disobedience in a small thing is never a small matter 
See, we always try to measure in all those big things. And oh, I obeyed this, I obeyed this. But those little things, we tend to disregard. See, in, uh, in that verse, in verse 7, it says, Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Or in other words, in other words, it says, then you will be prosperous. Let me ask you, do you make excuses for your sins? Determine this new year that you will obey him completely. Psalms 119 verse 60, it says, I will hasten and do not delay to obey your commands. What the Lord has commanded you, what the Lord has promised you, the word is complete. See, sometimes we make this obedience optional. Chela gairengal namal chayyande, dhannayarandhanne chayyadu, maati vakkanun disobedience. Delayed obedience is? Delayed obedience is disobedience. And that is what sometimes we do. We, we, we say that we obey all those things, but it's, uh, wait a little. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Number three, soak up scripture. Verse eight, it says, right? Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. See, up until this point, God spoke directly to his servants. But now that things have been written down, they were called to read and heed his book. See, till then, God appeared to Moses. But then he gave them the law, the Ten Commandments, as we say in Exodus. Right? And they have it. And they had to obey it. They had to soak up the scripture. In Psalm 119, Verse 97, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. See, the key to success is to digest scripture. See, we clap our hands every time that our children come in and say the memory verse, right? Why do we do that? To encourage them, right? But do we do that same thing to us? Nala jane, paraiva, Churchill Pandal, Jan Chicago, Larnabu, or a chamber, eh? Pulukar Pastra. Pulukar and Verna, I'll say, Lelarkum Pedia. Pedia a Kaidi with Reulu, Verna or Nebulukar and Barim. In the Javila Bible, white of Rella, in the Tikambari. That is Sunday morning, in the Javila Bible, white of Rella, in the Tikambari. Up a Pedia, he Pulukar and one, Pulukar and Paratu Lena Vernon. Yen the Barnabule, Nale. Paraya and Yambareva, the unparted thing like a cake of a guy, the other way. But say Paraya, Adatal Chil, ill adultsum, you put on the memory verse for even the Varanyal. Etra very worry. Eh? Memory boy got a go other than it. Other number of Varane, upper number of Hunyalo. Soak up the scripture. Not only that you read it, but you meditate on it and you soak it up what the meaning of the word is. That is why Psalms 1 and 1, 2, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. See, sometimes our kids who are after eighth grade, they are, they are waiting to be after eighth grade. You know why? Why? To not come up and say the? <laughs> They're just waiting that the eighth grade will be done. Poor Moka, she has two, three more years. Right, Moka? But that is not bad that you are memorizing the scriptures because when you soak up the scriptures, you are able to overcome your Jordans. In the midst of the troubles that you are going through, that is where when you soak up the scriptures, those scriptures will come to revive you and to reclaim the promises that has been declared in the scriptures that you are able to recite it and say that I will go forward no matter what because looking up, I find the confidence to move forward. 
Amen? Number four. Consecrate yourself. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Did he say what it was? Not yet. He just said, consecrate yourself. Sometimes we will only consecrate when the solution is right in front of us. Did he say what the solution is right there? No, only after that he said to the priest, this is what you got to do. Without even finding the solution, sanctification comes before service. Israelites were directed to get their hearts ready and clean. And the command consecrate meant they were to observe special dietary restrictions. They had to abstain from drinking wine to put off any celebrations. Because such was the command given at the foot of Mount Sinai for the giving of the law. And in the New Testament, the scriptures teaches us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You children of God, our holiness is not earned. It is the work of God in us, yet we are always called out to choose to be God's own, to live in awareness of his presence and to avoid unworthy actions that would diminish his reputation or offend him. Sanctification is not a choice, it is a mandate. It is a mandate. See, in the time of transition, from the verses that we've read, I will tell you it is not a a, a, a choice, it is a conscious decision on each and every part to find God's presence. This morning, if you want to move up, move forward by looking up, we have to consecrate ourselves. We have to sanctify ourselves. Transition times should be marked by pauses in our daily routines when we retreat to meditation to quiet times of listening to God. Quiet times of listening to God. Another way to consecrate is yourself is to give importance to the church and fellowship with fellow believers. See, for us, coming together sometimes is optional. I'm not here as an enforcer. I don't beat you up. If you don't show up, that's fine. I understand. But let me tell you, if it was something that was important to you, would you not separate all that time just to be in the presence of whatever was important to you? You know, I think probably the older generation does this, the younger generation, I don't know. But if we have to go tomorrow to a place, huh? we are ready from today. നാളെ അഞ്ചു മണിക്ക് പോകണമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ നാല് മണിയാകുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ റെഡി ആയിട്ട് നിൽക്കും ഇല്ലയോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ജനറേഷൻ അതില്ല കാരണം അവർ വണ്ടി കയറി കിടന്ന് ഉറങ്ങും പക്ഷെ നമ്മൾ എന്തോ ചെയ്യും ഞാൻ എനിക്ക് ഇപ്പോഴും അറിയാം എൻ്റെ ഫാദർ വെൻ ഹി വാസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ഇന്ത്യ വെർ എവർ ഈ വോണ്ട് ടു ഗോ ഓൺ എ ഫ്ലൈറ്റ് ഒരു മൂന്ന് മണിക്കൂർ മുമ്പ് തൊട്ട് എന്നെ മൂന്നല്ല നാല് മണിക്കൂർ മുമ്പ് തൊട്ട് ചലഞ്ച് ചെയ്യടാ എയർപോർട്ടിൽ പോകണം എയർപോർട്ടിൽ പോകണം എയർപോർട്ടിൽ പോകണം എപ്പോഴാ പോകുന്നത് എപ്പോഴാ പോകുന്നത് എപ്പോഴാ പോകുന്നത് ഇപ്പോഴാണെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ പത്ത് മിനിറ്റ് മുമ്പ് അവിടെ ഇടിച്ചങ്ങോട്ട് ചെന്ന് വെച്ച് കാരണം ടി എസ് എ ഫ്രീയും ക്ലിയറും എല്ലാം ഉണ്ട് എന്നെ മൂത്ത അവൾ പറയുന്നത് ഡാഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൺലി ഇറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ് എ ക്ലിയർ ടി എസ് എ ഫ്രീ ആൻഡ് ക്ലിയർ സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് റൈറ്റ് അവൈ വി ജസ്റ്റ് ഹാവ് ടു ബി ദർ ടെൻ മിനിറ്റ്സ് വാട്ട് യു ടോക്ക് അബൌ വാട്ട് ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് എ ലൈൻ ഓ ദ വോണ്ട് ബി ഇൻ എ ലൈൻ ബട്ട് ഇഫ് വി ഹാഡ് ടു ഗോ ഇഫ് ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ ടു വാസ് വാട്ട് വുഡ് യു ഡു fellowship with each other fellowship in the presence of god with each other and the believers how much it is important consecrate yourself namaku transition venam pashe adine price kodukka namaku vayya god moves among holy people that is why in romans 12:1 and 2 it says what therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god 
Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed with the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, this is also a choice that I give to the next generation. This is not for the adults alone. How much it is mandatory for you to be in the presence of God? In my house, there is no choice. Probably that is the reason. I don't believe that because for me, I'm grateful to God because they choose to come to church. They choose to come to fellowship. But when has it become an optional to not go and be with brothers and sisters? Or a basketball game or a prom or a homecoming agate. We will all be going, right? But for church, fellowship, oh, that's that. Oh, I have this thing to do. I have studies. Really? And I think that to us as a church, we have limited amount of time that we have to come in the presence of God. If you have work, I understand. If you have things that is emergency, I understand that. Some people cannot drive in the night. I understand that. But not all of us have. Consecrate yourself, dear children of God. If we want deliverance, we need to make some changes in our life. If we want to move forward, we have to make ourselves ready. The acts of renewing our commitment or making a new consecration prepare us to follow him through the transitions into new places. transition changes We have to make some changes in our life. We have to make changes. Number five, be ready for the transition. See, now courage in the Lord, obeying God, meditating on the scripture, and holiness will automatically bring us to God's plan and direction. Now, once the foundations are done, God starts leading us moving forward, looking up, see what God says. Joshua 1.11, it says like this, get, go through the camp, tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. And in Joshua 3, verse 2 to 4, it says, After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before, but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubics between you and the ark. Do not go near it. There is a lot of things to unpack, but I will just tell you this. We have to be ready for the transition. And just as I said before, not because they knew how to do it, they were just to follow orders. And we have to be ready for the transition God's way. We have to be ready for the transition God's way, not our way. This is, he saying an impossible thing. You have to cross the Jordan. You just say that you follow the leader. Who are the leaders? The priests. How? What are we going to do? But the thing is this, we have to be ready for the transition. Sometimes we are asking for souls. Sometimes we are asking for things that is impossible in our sight. But we are not ready for it. We are not ready for it. Because we haven't done those steps that we have to do to get to that next step. Are we ready for the transition? Joshua 3 says, This day I will bring to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that I was with Moses, so I will be with you. The Lord declared, Now is the time for the occupation of Canaan. But first there was a transition to be made. So they had to make a choice that would change Israel from a wandering nation to a settled nation, from people living in hope of a promise to a people living in possession of the promise. The crossing over was much more than moving the camp from one side of the river to the other. It was a time of commitment and a time of ending one era and entering into another. And I strongly believe this as a group of church members, as a family of God. We are about to go into a next realm and we need to be ready to move into it. 
And take this as a prophetic word that comes from the Lord. But we have to be ready for it. We cannot be casual just like the usual. Yes, God brought us from two families onto 22 or 23 or 25 families, whatever the number is. But are we ready to move from 20, 25 to 75? Or do we just want to be casual? And if that is the case, then we are losing the purpose where we are called. How many of you believe that we will move from 25 to 75? Some people say, Randu Vera Gitti Aadu Nangu Vellu Aadu. Ori family Vandha Aadu Nangu Vellu Aadu. But see, the problem is, we jump into it without understanding that we, are we ready or not. Some people say that they are called to certain things, but they are not because they have not done that step for transition. I've always said that be ready for the transition. How well do you do change? If we are going from 25 to 75, I will tell you there will be a lot of changes that needs to happen in us. There will be a lot of things that is different. We cannot operate the same way. Are we ready for it? Or are we wanting to be comfortable in 23 not to move on to 24? Sometimes these changes are driven by time, some are by experience. Some of the teens are getting into colleges. It is a transition. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Some people might be, God will take you to a different place. Are you ready for it? And is God taking you from maybe one ministry to the next ministry? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for the transition? You know, an unexpected job offer may come, but it an unexpected opportunity may come. But let me ask you this. Are we ready for that transition? Or will you cower from fear of what lies on the other side of the crossing or move forward in confidence to enter a new place of promise? And Joshua 3, 3 and 4 says, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, Levitical priest carrying it, you have to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. And I will tell you, dear children of God, as people of God, as family of God, as our family here, that when we go to that transition, are we ready for that transition? If not, we need to. And last but not least, move forward looking up. And that is what we read in the beginning. Chapter 3, verse 14 to 17. What happens when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan? The priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. The Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and the feast as the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap at a great distance away while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, that is Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Joshua focused the attention of the Israelites on the Ark of the Covenant. The steps, the steps, the feet. When would it touch and it changes? We want to see it. We want to see exactly when that happens. But what was Joshua telling them? Look at what? The ark. Look at what? The ark. Never lose the focus, dear children of God. The purpose is God. It was always been. It is continuing to be. And it will always be. The ark of God. See, Joshua, to Joshua, God said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Mo Moses, so I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Exodus 33, 14, it says, my presence will be with you. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. The focus should be always on the presence of the Lord. Just as I said, from 25 families, we might move on to 75, but never lose the focus 
that God is the purpose of it. God is the purpose of it. Follow God as he moves forward. We always need to look up. God knows the way ahead. God will lead you. Move when God moves. Grab the opportunities when God gives you. And Joshua 3.6 says, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead. 3.14, so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. So as God brought the people out of the land of bondage by dividing the Red Sea, he brought them into the land of promise by dividing the Jordan River. Two rivers that they had to cross. The Red Sea and the Jordan River. So no, here no armies were following them. As they were crossing the Red Sea, there was an army. And so they had to run through. There is the enemy trying to pull you out when you are in your initial stage. But as you are chasing the promise, it is only looking at the ark. Looking at the ark. You are about to enter into the promised land. That is where you need to go. And that is why in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 and 3, because if you had looked at the water, if you had looked at the steps, you would be scared because that waves could have overwhelmed you. And that is where I read this before, Isaiah 43, 2 and 3, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be able to burn. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Now, the, 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 as they cross, the stepping out has come. Now Israel puts up their tents. The Levitical workers took down the tabernacle. The priest stepped forward and shouldered the ark. The sacred chauffeur sounds announcing move out. Now, um, I read this somewhere who wrote it. It says, an awesome procession begins. I can hear the shuffle of a million feet and the bleating of sheep and goats. I can almost taste the dust as it arises. The priest marched down the central avenue of the camp towards the water's edge. The river was overflowing in its banks. It was an impossible barrier for half a million people. What would happen? Try to imagine what would have been like to have been the priest at the front of the group carrying the ark. You're walking towards the river with no bridge, no way across. When the priest's foot touched the water's edge, the Jordan stopped. See, Joshua said to the priest, take up the ark and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead. Now God did not stop the rushing water until the priest's feet hit the river. That is also a step of faith. That is a step of faith on the part of these priests. If you focus on the flood, you'll fail to step foot into the fray. As they were 10 feet away, the river raised. One foot away and the water sprayed onto their faces. One inch away and the mighty current showed no signs of letting up. But as soon as their feet touched the first wave, the water receded. It was dry ground and the people crossed Jordan. So from then on, there was no looking back. The book of Joshua is a story of conquest, right? Jericho falls in Joshua 6. AI is captured in Joshua 7. Again, impossibles. Impossibles. Then with Gilgal as the base, Joshua subdues all the southern part of Canaan in Joshua 9 and 10. And all the northern part in Joshua 11. And chapter 13 to 21, the land is parceled out to the tribes of Israel as was promised to Abraham. As was promised to Abraham. In chapter 21 of Joshua, verse 43, this is the climax where he says, Thus the Lord gave to all Israel all the land which he swore to give to their fathers. 
and having taken possession of it, they settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their fathers. Not one of all the enemies had withstood them, for the Lord had given all their enemies into their hands. Not one of all the good promises which the Lord has made to the house of Israel had failed, all came to pass. Dear children of God, if we are transitioning on to the next phase, if we are moving forward, we need to be able to cultivate courage. We need to be able to not make obedience optional. We have to soak up the scriptures. We have to consecrate ourselves. We have to be ready for the transition. And that's when we move forward looking up. Move forward looking up. Make sure that we would make this transition in our life. As Brother Wilson just said, let's move forward. Don't be stuck. Don't be comfortable. Let us do greater things for the cause of the kingdom. Let us have courage. Let us not make obedience of the word optional. Let us soak up the scriptures. Let us be able to get out of our comfort zone and consecrate ourselves. Make this a year that we will say that we will have fellowship more in terms of prayer. That we will come together in prayer. To the young generation, I will tell you, make God your priority. To the young families, we have young families. And I will tell you, do not withstand yourself or, or withhold yourself saying, that our kid is the priority, our job is the priority. That's all our things there. But when you make God as a priority, God will set everything right. When, when Binu Singh hit us, and it's almost a year, honestly, as, as a human, it was hard. And I would say that, you know, would there be, where would the income come? Because she's not working. She was the breadwinner. But there had to be a transition. Honestly, we had to cultivate courage. I had to cultivate courage. Of all the people, I had to step forward. And I said, Lord, whatever you say, I will do. And in those days were days, and I learned this from one of my friends, Josh Matthew. And Josh said to me when his dad was sick and he was in the hospital for almost three months, he was on a ventilator in the hospital. And he says, every single day I was there. And in the years, and for the next two, three years, the messages that he spoke was all the messages that he got by sitting in the presence of God at, at the bedside of his father. And so when he heard about Vinu, she came in and so he told me, hey, buddy, this is the time. Soak up the scripture. I had to make some changes in my life. So Binu, Binu, Binu says, right, I, I, made, I made more time for her. I, I did. Ministry was forefront for me. Everything that happens... That becomes the priority. I had to make priorities. Be right. And there is much more ahead of us. And we had to be ready for the transition. Not only us, not only both of us, but our children. The other day I was, I was so happy in the night when I went in and she was writing things on, on, on her journal. It would not have happened if mom was healthy. I, I guarantee you. We have to be ready for the transition because where God wants us to go, moving forward, we have to look up. There was nowhere else. And for the glory of God, I would say, we came out after, I was just trying to finish off my tax things because I want to get more... Um, money for her, so I'm trying to finish the taxes this month itself. We went okay. Yeah, there was a dent, but we, we are okay. It is God's doing. And for that, 
we need to be ready otherwise god will stir up our nest this morning are we ready for the transition if you are not get ready children of god if god has promised these people were able to see god gave them rest that means whatever he promised was finished it was done and god's promises will come to fruition sorry for taking up this time but this morning i was passionate to bring this word to you because we have to move forward we cannot be stuck let us close our eyes